everyone, if you've been following along, this is the second half of the stair videos that I'm going to be doing for this Revit series. Um, if you watched the first one, we took a look at how to put a stair plan into place to create the stair model. And in this, this video, we're going to be talking more about the vertical aspect of the stair section itself and uh, how to define the properties of the stair type. So we're going to get into your stair type and take a look at how some of these things change. The first thing that I want to do though is uh, show you a couple things about the stair that you created in the first segment. Uh, let's just take a look at this and slap a couple dimensions on it quick. Now come over to the annotate tab here and I'm just going to dimension the actual run right now. It's at uh, seven and a half. And let me just change the scale up a little bit here. And I'm going to put in an actual depth here for the tread. So if I select my actual stair now and I come into the instance properties of this one, I can actually change the desired number and you'll see some changes take place um, as, as soon as you make those changes. So if I wanted to decrease the number of stairs and I hit apply, it's going to give me an error message about it, but it is going to change it. So if I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that it's changed my rise from seven and a half to eight. The actual riser height is 8 and 9, 128. So I'm seeing an 8 here because the precision is to the nearest inch or half inch. But that's going to be the actual riser height that's needed to make this, this stair height. So in essence, what you'd have to do is go back to your sketch and remove that last one. This might actually be preferable if you wanted to go with an 8 inch rise but maybe you wanted to make it less steep so you could come back here and make that 16 and make it a seven inch rise. You know that it's actually seven and one sixteenth. Um, so that might be something that's a little bit easier to work with. And then you could, again, come back to your main floor um, and then just extend the stair itself. You might want to just come in here and add another one to it right and so it's saying the bottom of the run yada yada um, shouldn't be lower let's extend this one see what happens okay so it lets me do it there uh, let's just grab that check mark and we'll go back to the section. Okay, so that's probably preferable is that that option there. Um, you might want a steeper run, but anyway, let's take a look at some of the options that we can uh, we can explore here as well. So again, I'm coming back to the stair, selecting that, and I'm just going to. Uh, Take a look here, the actual tread, if I change that to a 10, what happens here? It's saying that the landing depth is less than the run width, so there's an issue um, with my runs. Okay, so that's not a big deal. I would come back in again, say edit the stairs. We take a look at this in plan view and just modify these, these to suit, right? So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, exit out of here. I just wanted you to see if what would happen if we uh, if we change that. Okay, so back to the section, and let's just change that back because right now what it's doing is it's adding another inch for the nosing profile, and my tread profile doesn't connect that far because it's a nested family um, in its in itself. Okay, I'm just so I'm just gonna undo those changes that we made. Okay, so I'll grab that stair section again, and let's go into edit type now. Um, so you can see that I've got um, a maximum riser height of seven and seven eighths, and when we made those changes before, we actually had a riser height of 
eight inches. The the overall was eight inches. Um, but before that, we got an error message or at least a warning that said, hey, this exceeds your maximum riser height. Are you okay with this? And we just said, yes, of course, fine, whatever, and ignored it like we always <laughs> ignore the messages. But it let you know that, hey, you're going to be up over. So if this was a code restriction and it was 200 millimeters or 7 and 7 eighths, whatever that restriction is, you can put it in there uh, just to validate whether you're actually going above um, what you really should be. Um, so again, here is my minimum tread depth. I can change that in here as well. And then that will, of course, change your actual tread depth after the fact. Um, I've got a minimum run width here of three feet. So basically, if that's the established minimum run, it's going to use that to create your default uh, run, your default width of your run. Now, yeah, I'll also have calculation rules. Now, this is getting into a little bit more, um, some more math. I suppose you could probably just leave this as is for the most part. Uh, you shouldn't have to adjust this if, uh, if you don't want to. But if you do, um, you can check this and put in these values. So basically, it's two, two times the rise plus one depth is going to equal um, equal this. And so ours would actually be, if it was uh, 7 inches, it would be 14 inches plus the 9.5 would give us whatever that value is, and we'd plug that in there. And that's what Revit would use uh, to create our slope. So I'm, I'm going to uncheck that and leave that as is. But I just kind of wanted to come in here and explore some of these things with you. Now, one of the other ones here is your construction type. So this is the actual family type that your stair construction is created with. So we've got materials for the treads and the risers, as well as the tread thickness. This might be more accurately reflected at say one inch, if you're gonna use like a three quarter inch riser or you know a built up system of some sort. You know, I'm gonna leave it as one inch for the time being and I'll hit apply. And you'll see that the actual riser now is shifted up. Okay, so that means that essentially my riser profile would have to change. Now I can come into that riser profile and modify it so that it suits this setting. I don't really want to do that for the time being, so I'm just going to change this back to I think it was an inch and a quarter to make that, that difference. And. Is it a half? Okay, so put that back to the way it was. Now the tread profile as well um, is another family again. So you've got a, a, a nested family for your riser profile and you have a nested family for your tread profile. Let's just take a look at this one here. If I change that, it brings it back to um, one of those standard uh, metal risers. Okay, so I obviously don't want that, so I'll come back to my construction and change that back to this one here that I've created. And this one's just like for wooden construction, uh, dimensional lumber. Um, I've got an additional one inch nosing profile on that. If you wanted, you could change that to something way more drastic or extreme. I don't want to, so I'll put it back. Um, and then the nosing profile, it could be, uh, there's, you know, you might want a round nosing profile. You want, might want a bull nose. Um, I've just left mine as a, as a square default, but you can modify those as well. Um, you could even put in uh, like a, a friction strip or a, a non-slip strip if you wanted on the nosing profile, something to that effect. If it was a commercial stair. Okay, so then risers. You also got this handy little checkbox for risers. So if I uncheck risers and hit apply, it takes out my risers. Now, this is something that's done often enough, especially with passive solar design. If you want airflow, you take your risers out and you've got, um, it gives you a much more lit space, more circulation for air. 
Um, so you can do that. You can just remove the risers altogether. They're still there, hypothetically, but it's just not showing them in the geometry. Uh, you can put a slanted riser in. If you're using a, a monolithic stair, you can, you can put the, the slant in as well. Um, the riser thickness, I've got these at three quarters of an inch, but if we wanted to make these a full inch as well, we could do that. And um, what else? So the riser profile, as I said before, it's following uh, a default profile that I've already got set up. was that three quarters oh no not six foot three <laughs> uh, okay there we go and um, extend riser beyond tread so this is another detail that you can um, you can modify that so that the the tread goes beyond or you can join them as well. Um, that might be something that I don't know you want to do if you're creating a mass. So I just like this one here, extend risers behind the tread. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the construction of your stair type. Now, if I hit OK, there's still another construction for the supports. Okay, so um, you can get into these as well, but before we do that, let's take a look at the landing type. So you have a, a run type, that's the stair themselves, and then the landing type. So if I click in this little button that's got the three dots, um, I've got some options here as well. Okay, so right now this is the same as my, my runs, but if I uncheck this, now I'm getting some more options here. Um, I'm just going to cancel out of this so that we can take a look at how some of these things change here. Uh, so let's go back. I'm going to just quickly change that back to the right for the run. Okay, so this is what this is what I want to be seeing here. And uh, let's go go back to the landing type. Okay, so right now it's saying uh, non-monolithic landing. And if I go in here, it's saying that it's the same as my run. Okay, but I might want to add some modifications to this. So I uncheck this, and then I can change my tread material, which is essentially this long um, piece of flooring or whatever for the, for the landing. And then I can modify this so that the, the tread thickness is is different. Um, maybe I want the tread thickness for the landing to be uh, four inches, right? So say delete, and it and then it modifies that uh, last riser, and it gives me much thicker, thicker tread there. That's not what we're going to be using, but maybe you have some kind of construction in place for that. That's got uh, like a, a steel decking with a concrete topping or something to that effect, and it's a good way to make it. Um, move that back to two, we'll leave the nosing as one, and the nosing profile should be default. Okay, so that brings it back to where I want it. Now, there's also, um, there's also something about the supports. So, if we make some changes on our supports, okay, if I click in here again, sorry, it's the support type. Right, so we'd come in again and modify the type. So you have a section profile again, so you can you can modify this, um, just the same thing as what I'm using from before. But this is what I wanted to really address was this here, the structural depth on the run. Okay, so if I change that to two, you'll see that it it modifies where the run is. Okay, I had that as uh, as four. Now just notice this top line of the stringer here as I change that back. Okay, so notice that it's it's dropped it um, from the top line. It is actually probably a little bit better at two or one. Okay, so I, I like that, how that looks a little bit more. And then you have a structural depth on the landing. Okay, so if I make this an inch 
and a half, like the structural depth on the run, it's going to drop the where the landing is on this stringer. Is that fine? I don't know. It all depends on, on the detailing. But it probably would be lower than that um, so that you could support the actual tread of the landing with something else. So you drop that, we'll say put in uh, six. Okay, and now I have a space where I can put in um, like a, f a floor joist of some sort to support this landing. Okay, so um, you've also got uh, a width and a total depth. So this depth is essentially uh, a 2 by 12 and this is the actual depth of the, the lumber. So if you're going to use a 2 by 12 it's actually going to be an inch and a half by 11 and 5 eighths but you might not want to show it that way so then you could actually put in one foot and put in a two. But know this that if you use a width of an inch and a half when you're placing your boundaries for your landing or your stringer you're going to actually want to use an inch and a half as the offset from the wall um, that'll define the thickness and give them that connection so to illustrate that i'll show you uh, quickly i'll say okay and let's go back to the main floor and if i select my stair now and say edit stairs you'll notice that i've got the stringers okay and i've got the landing and I can hover over any of these lines and hit the tab and it'll cycle through the different components. So if I wanted to just grab this stringer or this chain of stringers, I can do that by pressing the tab key. Okay, but what I wanted to mention was how am I defining the overall perimeter of my landing or my stair? If I come in here and go to, um, now that I've selected it and it says convert to sketch base, Okay, I can say edit sketch now and you'll notice that these lines that define the outside perimeter of my landing are actually an inch and a half away. So this is how I know to pick. Um, I, I know that I'm using an inch and a half for my stringer thickness so when I say pick lines I'm picking this line here and it's going to draw it here. Okay, so I hope that that clarifies uh, a little bit about stringers and stairs and the structure of them. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I know that was a little bit longer than what we usually do, but it's a pretty deep, uh, deep topic and we could go on and on for quite a while longer, but um, hopefully we'll be back soon with a video on railings for you. So thanks for watching and check back soon. Bye now.